James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is December 4th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had three M-Class solar flares today. We haven't seen one in over seven days until today. The first M flare we had was probably much larger and stronger than an M class solar flare. They called it an M 2.3 here as it hit our GOES X ray fluffs, but this was actually generated from a sunspot that is still around the limb currently, and it was mainly eclipsed by the incoming limb. So, again, this was probably much stronger than an M 2.3. This happened or peaked at 10 UTC time, which is 5 a.m. Central Time here in the U.S. That was followed by a 1-2 punch, an M 1.3, followed by an M 1.4 here. Those were both generated from Sunspot AR 3916. The first one peaked at 2048 UTC time. The other one peaked 17 minutes later at 2105 UTC time. That is 348 Central Time and 405 Central Time here in the U.S. Now the mostly eclipsed M2.39 that was definitely much larger well, that has been the biggest M flare we've seen in over seven days. You'll see it's the 72 hour max, the 24 hour max. You'll see it down here in M2.3, peaking at 10 UTC time. We discussed that, that was 5 a.m. Central. Now, it's not assigned to a sunspot group because that sunspot group probably won't be named till tomorrow. That sunspot group is still quite a ways behind the limb of our sun. That's what makes me think it was a much larger blast, and we're going to have a sunspot group that we're going to have to deal with very shortly. Now, again, not having an M flare for over seven days, we had two additional M class solar flares, both generated from sunspot group AR3916, just recently named. You'll see the 1 3 here, peaking at 2046 as we discussed which is 346 central time and that was followed by the m 1.4 peaked at 2105 which of course is 405 central time here in the u.s today we had a five percent chance of having an x-class solar flare a 30 percent chance of having an m-class solar flare which hey we had three and a 99% chance of having a C-class solar flare. We have not gone below a C baseline in at least three to four months. Now, because SDO is down, we're going to have to use some other equipment here. This is the best composite I could get with named sunspot groups. You can see that 3916 is here, and really by the time it went off, it was right about here. We'll take a look at those explosions. And the other explosion came from, well, around the limb here. We'll also be able to see on GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager all the activity. And we'll take a look at the backside of the sun. With that said, we currently have eight sunspot groups Earth-facing. These three are a little bit more complex. As you can see, they're in orange. The rest of them are very simple sunspots. We have no gamma sunspots on the earth facing side of our solar disk all right ladies and gentlemen believe it or not this little action you see right there that was the second the m 1.4 solar flare that little pop right there coming from sunspot group ar3916 now this sunspot group that's coming around the limb that has not been named yet looks like there may be several based on these plasma arcs that is what generated the M2.3 M flare, which I'm sure was much, much larger, just mostly eclipsed by the incoming limb. I want to also mention that we have 
a coronal whole earth facing currently we should see an uptick in solar winds over the next couple of days we have a second coronal hole here that will be earth facing within 40 hours so we should see higher solar winds overall for i would say the next three to five days heading over to our d region absorption prediction center this is the peak of the second M flare we had today, the M1.3 generated from Sunspot Group AR3916. It peaked at 2046, as you can see here. And if we just go slightly further, we get the next one that actually peaked here at 21. 05. See if we can get it right at 2105. We're calling that the peak, and that's going to be the M1.4 solar flare. Both of them could have generated a chrome mass ejection. At this point, we have no way of knowing. But they both happened one after another, and both of them were over the Pacific Ocean, basically just over Hawaii. Not very strong solar flares, but definitely worth mentioning since the sun has been so quiet for so long. Now we're going to quickly jump over to Gong. That's right, Gong. And we should see all those sunspots here coming around the limb. This is Earth facing side, and this is the far side of Gong. And it's not doing a very good job. I told you, it just is not a very good instrument compared to SDO. Uh, I don't see anything coming around, but we know we have several large sunspot groups that should be showing up right around here. Next, we'll take a look at our KP indexes real quickly. We had three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance on the college index. Nothing showed up on any of the other indexes. We really look at the estimated planetary index, the upgraded index that NOAA and NASA uses for the most accurate information. We see here that yesterday we had six hours of a geomagnetic storm and three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance on the college index. Always, always the most sensitive index of all of the four. Finally, jumping over to our Discover real-time solar wind satellite, we see that we had a huge jump from about two centimeters cubed in plasma up to eight, nine and then really over the space weather threshold, here's a pop of 13, 10 being the space weather threshold. So we had a couple of impacts here. I don't know what of, but uh, they both went up to about 13 centimeters cubed, which should or is considered space weather. A geomagnetic storm of some sort. We did see the disturbance show up on the college index only. Solar winds are rather strong as well. They started the day out at around 450, and they've been up as high as, let's see here, we'll call it about 540. Can't grab that dot, but definitely over 500. We've got some 520s in there and some higher readings that we haven't been able to grab. So we did have a pop in solar winds after those two small pops in plasma, but all in all, it was just a small disturbance, small geomagnetic disturbance. So, so far for the day, we're doing pretty good. Three small M flares and a little bit of a geomagnetic disturbance and some stronger solar winds. With that said, God bless each and every one of y'all. Please share, subscribe, and always remember, Anything's possible. Bizarro world.